when we were when we were starting to build this church um as we were starting to build this church, I decided that I wanted to do series, series of messages, because I believe that when God was speaking to me, he wasn't just speaking a word, he was speaking a word in season. It, it, it's, it's, it's one thing, Chelsea, to hear a word. It's another thing to hear that word in the season that you're in. And for the season, see, when God speaks in a season, he speaks for that season. Mm. And there's some words you've received, you know, that you, you, you received them, you weren't on the right shepherd or you weren't listening to the right voice or maybe you was on the internet or something and you heard the word, but it wasn't your season for that word. So it wasn't applicable to your life at that time. And then the beautiful thing about the word is that it's alive and it's active. <laughs> so that when you came upon that particular mountain, all of a sudden you reach back for that message you heard from... And it worked for you. But, but, but the thing about having a shepherd or having somebody who, who, who was the under shepherd of this particular house is that I believe that the word God gives me is in season for the house. Okay, I know that don't matter to you. So, but it's in season for the house and that, that's very important. And, 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 and I'm not even starting yet. Just give me a second because I need you to understand this. That's why it matters that you take notes. Because it's important. It's, it's, it, 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 you might not. You, you might walk away from this and forget this word, but the word is for you in this season, and you're gonna need it in this season or right in that next season. You're gonna need this word. And so I said, I, I talked to my wife. I said, "Baby, I, I want to preach in series because I believe that God talks to me in seasons, and I don't want to just come up and pop up and do a, like a, um, you know, uh, I won't be crass. I'll just say." I, I don't want to just pop up and serve y'all some warmed over soup. Okay? I, I, want to, I want to be able to be in study about a particular word. And, and, and the one thing that um, the last series allowed me to do is just spend some time with God. Just spend some time studying on the word that I believe that God had for you in this season. And I believe that this word, if you, oh, Jesus, hear me right here. If you can, if I can add illumination to it, and you allow God to give you revelation from it, I believe that it'll bring transformation to your life. I, this is just, this is my preface to the message. This is not my intro, this is my preface to the message. I, mean, I ain't even got in chapter one yet. But I believe that God is, has a word for this church. I believe God has a word for this body. I believe that God wants us, uh, hear me right here, uh, uh, God wants us to go to a new destination. God wants us to go to a new place. And what, what he's doing now is preparing you for the place that we're going. I need you to hear me right here because when we get in that place, if you don't hear this word, you'll be lost in that place. Okay, so this is me telling y'all, okay, we are about to get out this car. <laughs> Some of y'all don't got kids, so you don't know. <laughs> well, you've been a kid. All right, okay, we about to get out this car and go in this store now. I do, okay, don't be asking for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, what, I, what I'm saying is, is preparation for where we're about to go, okay? Okay, so I started praying about the word that God uh, gave me and, 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 and I, we, we stumbled upon this a couple of weeks ago in Bible study. We stumbled upon this idea about the prodigal son and, and, and the things that belong to a son. Oh, Jesus. The things that belong to a son. See, some, look at somebody and say, some stuff belongs to me. Some of y'all are asking for things that already belong to you. I can't even. Some of y'all are asking for things. You're, you're, in a, you're, you're, you're pleading to God for things that God's saying, it's yours already. It's yours already. It's yours already. And all you got to do is take another step. I, man, all you got to do is take another step. And you'll see, see the, the work of the cross is finished. It's done. It's complete. So God ain't doing nothing else. Oh, yeah, that's hard. But what he did was he put little breadcrumbs in places in certain seasons and spaces. And what your job is is to follow those breadcrumbs. My job is to remind you where they are. Your job is to go after them. Does that make sense? I can't make you chase what belongs to you. 
I can only remind you that it does belong to you. Are y'all with me today? So with all that being said, we're going to start a new series today called Rings, Robes, and Rebox, okay? So I'm going to read a little bit of text, um, and, and I, I'll try to just read through it really quickly because I, I do have a word for you guys. I, I'm going to read through this text, and then we're going to talk a little bit, and then I'm going to read a little more, and then we're going to talk a little more, and then I'm going to read a little bit more. Is that okay? Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Now, in this particular house, we stand for the reading of the word. Uh, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't do that now. So I'm going to ask you to, if you're able to, to stand and, you know, if, if you next to somebody who uh, is not able, help them up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to have this on the screen, but the person next to you should be able to share their Bible, their mobile device with you or whatever. If they won't share with you, they're not saved. Move to a different seat and you'll be, <laughs> you'll be, you'll be blessed. Amen. <laughs> We're going to turn our Bible. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm back. Ain't no chairs. Ain't no chairs and couches and, and stuff on this. <laughs> We're going to go to Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Now, while you're turning there, I want to I wanna give you uh, just a little bit of insight into the book of Luke. The book of Luke is a, is a book about God's grace to people who don't deserve it. The entire book, the picture of the book of Luke, is about God's grace to people who don't deserve it, to people who, who are not worthy of it. And it's about a king who shows grace to those people. And in this particular chapter, we get, we, we get a couple of ideas that, I, that I'm going to flesh out here. Okay, I, I just need you guys to be ready. I need you guys to be going with. Are y'all ready today? Are y'all, do y'all have expectancy about what God is going to do? Okay, beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to start reading that verse 11, okay? Uh, if you're, Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Are, are we ready? We good? Okay, here we go. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. Somebody say two sons. Two sons. That's going to matter next week, okay? Not as much this week, but next week. That's going to matter, okay? Uh, the younger son said to him, him, the father, the younger son said to him, father, give me my share of the a state. Look at somebody and say, give me what's mine. Okay, all right, all right. We're going to keep it 100 today. Give me what's mine. I don't want none of yours, but I want all of mine. Some of, who, y'all, some of y'all played dominoes with me before. All right. Okay, so he divided his property between them. And after a few days, the younger son got everything together. Oh, Lord. Somebody say, put it together. He got everything together and he sojourned to a distant country where he squandered his wealth by riotous living. Now, I, I don't know what riotous means, but I think it looks something like... It's got to look something like that. I don't know, fully know. We don't use that word. But I think it was. I think it might look like. Like. I think it looks something. Okay, I don't, I don't know. I'm just. This is what the picture that comes to my head when it says riotous living. All of a sudden, the gap band start playing in my. <laughs> Some of y'all not. That's anachronistic. That's before your time. Okay. After he had spent all he had, a severe famine swept through the country. So look at somebody and say, the famine's coming. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter. You can be living right or not living right. The rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. The famine's coming. Okay, oh, okay, all right. I'm, I'm, y'all gonna get me going too early. Okay, the famine's coming, and he began to be in need. That the Greek word for in need is not, it's not two words. It's one word. It's hysterio. Hysterio. Somebody say hysterio. hysterio. It's where we get the word hysteric, hysterical. He began to be hysterical. Sometimes need will make you do crazy stuff. Y'all not ready for church today. Sometimes need will make you do some stuff you didn't plan on doing. Some stuff you didn't, you, you'll do some stuff you promised yourself you wouldn't do. 
so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country. Be, be careful what you do, the decisions you make when you're thirsty. Be careful that you don't prostitute yourself, I mean, hire yourself out to the wrong person when you, th- oh, y'all thought I was talking to somebody else, church. Okay, yeah, be careful the, the things you do when, you, when, you're, when you're hungry, okay, who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his belly with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him a thing. I want to remind you of something, pigs are stingy. Come on, sir. <laughs> If you spend your time with pigs, you better know that they stingy. Okay, all right, all right. Finally, he came to his senses and said, how many of my father's hired servants have plenty of food to eat? But here I am starving to death. I will get up and go back to my father and say to him, hear this, say to him, hear this, say to him, hear this, father, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against heaven. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me like one of your hired servants. And then he God, uh, uh, sometimes I wish you could just see what I see when I see. You got to have a get up in your spirit. You got to have a get up in your spirit. Something got to say, I, mean, I got to get up. I don't belong here. I'm better than this. I'm not better. You know, people say, you think you're better than me. No, I'm not better than you. I'm better than this. Yeah. You got to make up in your mind, I'm better than this, okay? Then he got up and went to his father, but while he was still a long way off, thank you, Jesus, his father saw him and it was filled with compassion, and he got up and ran out to his son and embraced him and kissed him. The son started on his speech that he had written so eloquently earlier. (laughs) Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And the father said, shut up. Your speech won't help you. Your dialect, your dialogue, all those little things they taught you to say in church, it won't help you. Do you belong to me or not? Are you my child or not? I don't need your speech. I need you to come home. Oh, I done already. If you're my son, you'll respond like my son. You'll walk like my son. You'll act like my son. Don't be begging to be a servant. You're a son. But the father said to his servants, quick, right now, do this now. Bring me the best robe. Uh Uh-oh, there it is. Robe, you can, bring me the best robe to put on him. Then put a ring on his finger. If you love him, then you should have put a ring. Put a ring on his finger and then put the Reeboks, I mean the sandals, on his feet. I know y'all want to sit down. I'm almost done. Bring the fatty calf and kill it. Bring a fatty calf. Bring another fatty calf. No, bring the one that I've been storing, the one that I promised to him, the one that I can't wait. I set it aside. The wealth of the wicked is... Bring the fatty calf. Let us feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead, but now he's alive again. He was lost, and now he's fine, found. And they began to celebrate. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We love you, Lord. Help me help them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. High five somebody and say, it's already been good. Then you can have a seat. So I wanted, to, I wanted to talk to you about this particular uh, story in the Bible. I wanted to talk to you about this, peri- this particular pericope in the Bible. I, 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 was, I, I was praying about it, but I, I wanted you to understand something, that I was taught this story incorrectly. And I bet you were too. I was taught that the moral of this story had to do with sin. The idea of this story had to do with sin. That this story was about sin. That, 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 that we prescribed this particular person uh, because of what we saw him do or what we saw him say or how we saw him live. We, we associated him with being a sinner. 
and we believed that. We stood on that. We said, okay, this story is about sin, but, but, but I challenge that today. I want to remind you today that this story is not at all about sin. This story is not at all about sin. Somebody say, this story is not about sin. Every way this story has ever been articulated to me in my whole life has been pushed toward, oh, this is what happens when you act a fool. When you go out and act up, this is what happens. This is the result. And, 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 and you would think that, 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 that the result of the story was him sleep, sleeping with the, with the swine. But that, that's not what this story is about. When we use words like squandered and, and riotous, we ascribe a lifestyle to this main character that may not be justified in the text. Riotous does not mean sinning. I, I, I told a little fib earlier, I do know what it means. You, you wanna know what it means? Riotous, do you wanna know what it means? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You could keep thinking it mean that. Riotous means undisciplined. Riotous means a, a, a undisciplined life, a, a unprepared life. And, and, and it's easy to talk about this person when you don't understand the particular words that are used to describe this person. You can automatically associate him and, and you can pitchfork him like you do to everybody else. Pitchfork Christians, that's what we have now, right? So the preacher preaches and then the, the pitchforkers, they sit on, they sit, <laughs> I was going to say they sit on this, in this area. No, I'm just kidding. I love these people. The pitchforkers, they, sit, they, they usually sit in the front of the church, but when the word come, they pitchfork it to the back. Oh, this is about sister such and such. Oh, girl, did you hear him today? He was talking about Preach, preacher! But some of y'all need to put down y'all pitchfork and pick up a spoon. Amen. It's what's for dinner. Amen. Amen. So you need to figure out how, you need to figure out whether this word applies to you. And if you think that that person lives so crazy and so uh, 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 unrighteously, you, you're missing the point of the text. That, that's not what the text is about. That's not at all. This text is not about sin. Look at somebody say, this is not about sin. Not about sin. If, 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 most of y'all could describe a part of your life as undisciplined. Yeah. Most of y'all can describe a place in your life now, currently, where you were undisciplined. Most of y'all, right now, it's in your head, a space where you're undisciplined and you got you to gotta learn to be prepared for what God is going to do in your life because the famine's coming. Okay? Does that make sense? So he squandered away. And I, I want you to understand something because this is what the church will do. The church will misdiagnose you when they haven't he heard the full story. Oftentimes the church will, will, will give you a prescription for something that doesn't quite fit the scenario because we think it's about one thing, but really it's about another thing. You, you think I'm just a bad person, but the truth is I never had my father in my life. So you misdiagnosed. You think, I, I, you think I, 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 I'm... I'm <laughs> Sleazy. Is that a word that people use anymore? That's old. That's an old word. An old word. <laughs> Loose. That's, uh, that's older than sleazy. <laughs> you, think, uh, you think I'm loose, but really I never had a, a, a good female figure in my life to show me the way and to point in the right direction. In fact, I'm sort of like my mama. If you knew my mama, you would see her in me and, and you would misdiagnose who I am because you, you got to get all the way back to the root. You're trying to diagnose fruit, but you got to get back to the root. You can't just diagnose my fruit. You got to see where it came from. And my fear is that in misdiagnosing people, we're missing the point. The story is not about sin. In fact, this entire story, in fact, to understand this story in its entirety, you have to go back to the beginning. You have to rewind to the beginning. You have to rewind to the beginning. You have to rewind to the beginning of Luke. 
You have to rewind to the beginning of Luke. And Luke chapter 15 tells three very unique stories, but those stories cannot be, uh, uh, they cannot be taken apart. They have to be eaten all together to have a balanced meal. You have to understand that these three stories work together. The first story is a story that, that, that's been pretty familiar to you. That we sing about it, it's, it's songs about it and everything. It's the story of a shepherd who loves all his sheep, cares about all his sheep, wants all his sheep to do well, but, but when he realizes that one of them is not, he places all of them in a safe space and then he goes to check on the one. I need you to understand something because if you don't understand the heart of the shepherd, you'll feel neglected. Oh, hear me right here. You'll feel neglected by being part of the 99 when you don't realize that sometimes you are the one. It's easy to, it's easy to hate on the one when you're in the 99. But when you realize that you are the one and that God... That the shepherd came to look after you, you get a different predisposition about the relationship of the shepherd to the one. The shepherd goes and finds the one wherever he is stuck, wherever he, wherever he is lost. And the shepherd will take that one and put him up on his shoulders. And I, I just need you to understand, church, that you, you might see him with one on his shoulders, but don't, don't get jealous. Just, re, just remember the next time you get stuck, he'll do the same thing for you. The first story is about a shepherd who loses a sheep. The Bible says he leaves the 99 to go find the one. Uh, that's an amazing shepherd. That's a beautiful shepherd. The second story is, a, is about a young lady who has some coins. She has some money. She has something that is valuable to her. I need you to hear me right here. That is valuable to her, and she loses one of them. And the Bible says that she, she, she goes on a hunt. She goes on a search. She's searching all over. Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. She searched all over. She's looking all over. And she cannot find her coin. And the Bible says that even she, she eventually lights a lamp. Hear me right here, Jesus. Some of y'all, you don't need to be got, gotten out of trouble. You just need to light a lamp. You don't need to be rescued. You just need to light a lamp. If it, there is a light on the inside of you, if you just get up in the morning and say, this little light of mine, I'm about to let it shine. I believe God is doing a new thing in my life. I believe he's turning some things. Or, some things are broken, yes, but I'm going to light my light up today. A woman that loses something of value to her. She lost something. A shepherd who lost a sheep. A woman who lost a coin, a shepherd who lost a sheep, a woman who lost a coin. Then we get to this third story, and it's about a father who lost a son. It's not about a son who sinned. The, the, the son is not even the main character of the story. You're looking at it from the wrong disposition. The story is about the father. You, you'll see this later on when the story shifts because the camera will follow the father. We never see the son again, but the camera follows the father. Get this. I, I was praying about this. I said, God, I, I, I feel like you got something for me right here, and I don't want to go far into the story and miss what you have for me. I said, well, tell me, show me what you have for me right here. He said, he said, he said, he said son, you got to realize 15, it all works together. It's not about one person who lost something. It's about three people who lost something. It's not about one person who lost something. It's about three people who lost something. It's not about one being who lost something. It's about three beings who lost something. It's not about one, uh, one entity that lost something. It's about three entities, three in one, three entities in one. Okay, all right, you don't get it. Okay, so, 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 so he said, he said the, the, the shepherd is the first person represented here, and the shepherd, I, I, I was thinking about this, and Jesus would call himself the good shepherd. And though he's telling the story, he's telling it so that you understand that he is not a sheep in the story. He is a shepherd in the story. He's saying, I'm the good shepherd. Okay, I, I said, I get that, Jesus. He says, okay, now the woman, the woman represents the Holy Spirit. 
you got to understand that the word ruha in Hebrew is a feminine word. It's not a masculine word. So the word that represents spirit in Hebrew, it is a feminine word. And when you look for the Holy Spirit, oh, Jesus. The reason you don't recognize the Holy Spirit is because you won't let her preach. The reason you don't recognize the Holy Spirit is because she can't stand behind the pulpit. But God said, I put something on the inside of her, and it's got a feminine motion to it. And you say, and I looked all the way back to Genesis, and I I recognized that motion because the Bible said that Adam walked, but the spirit moved. Jesus, I was studying this word, and Tab walked into the room. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I closed my Bible. Oh, you know what I mean. Okay. The, the spirit moves. The spirit is represented by this young lady who lost something of value. So we have the, we have the son who is the good shepherd. And we, we have the Holy Spirit who is represented by this woman. And then we have a father who lost a child. He said, he said, he said, Luke chapter 15 is not about sin, it's about the Trinity. It's not about sin, it's about all three of us and how we lost something, and how we lost something, and how we. You ever had that feeling, JK? I think I got everything else. I think I. Now, imagine being omniscient. Omniscient means all-knowing. Being omnipotent. Omnipotent means all-powerful. All-knowing, all-powerful. Now, being in all places at the same time, the Lord, the Bible says the Lord is everywhere. His spirit is everywhere. Wherever you are, that's where he is. Imagine being all-knowing, all-powerful, and and omnipresent still feeling like I lost something. I lost something. I lost a child. I lost a baby. I lost something that belongs to me and I won't be comfortable. I won't sleep. I won't I'll do whatever. I'll push all these sheep over here to go find the one. I'll chase all after the value of the thing that I lost. I'll I'll sit up on the porch all night and day until I see what I anybody ever lost Anybody ever lost something in here? You know how crazy that make you feel when you lost? Where did I put that up? Where did I put that? My my dad used to say, sit down on your butt so the ideas could go back up to your brain. I used to say, daddy, that's mean. Then I sat down, because when you sit down, you could think about some stuff. But this is the picture that we get of the father. We'll we'll deal with this some more next week. But that father was sitting on that porch, waiting, searching, looking for what he lost. Have you ever lost something? Now imagine not ever having a need in all eternity. Imagine spinning the globe on your finger like the Harlem Globetrotters. But still feeling like, I lost something. This is not a story about sin. This is a story about loss. It's a story about a lost child. It's a story about, and it's often, it's often that we can put our, 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 our bad decisions on that person. We can put our bad uh, mojo on that person and say, yeah, but he, he did it to himself. And I, I, I really need you to understand something, uh, uh, something else. He didn't do anything wrong. The Bible says he asked his father for what was his. I want to help you right here because there are some things that belong to you. 
The father did not rebuke the son for asking for what was here. Oh, hear me right here. The father was happy to give the son. My, my daddy is going to be happy to give you everything that belongs to you. There are some blessings that belong to you. There are some freedoms that belong to you. Listen, there are some sanities that belong to you. And God said, I'll be happy to give them to you. You got to understand the position of a son. See, we talked about this in Bible study too. Y'all, y'all be missing it. Sons assume responsibility. Sons assume responsibility. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm leaving, and I'm going on sabbatical. Me and my wife in August, um, we take a sabbatical. Don't call me. We, we, we're going to go on a sabbatical. We take a sabbatical. Oftentimes when we leave, people say, who's in charge when you're gone? My, my, my sons never said that before. They assume responsibility. That's what sons do. They step up into the right place. Dad's not here. The doorbell rings. I got to go answer the door. I'm responsible now because I'm a son. I walk in a position of sonship. But see, the problem is, in the church particularly, is that we, we, we expect to raise servants and have them act like sons in our absence. If you don't raise sons, you won't have sons. And the appropriate thing for this son to do was to say, yes, give me what belongs to me. The Bible says that he divided to them what belonged to them. He didn't rebuke them. He didn't get mad. He didn't cry to them. He did what the appropriate thing was. He separated and he gave it to them. Then the Bible said he put his stuff together. That that sounds right to me. He got it all. He gathered, Michelle, he gathered it all together. That sounds appropriate to me. He set himself up. He, he did the best he could to figure out, okay, I got this much money. It's going to work like this. The Bible says he wasted it. Now, that's the part I need you to understand because there's some parts in your life that you've been wasting. There's places in your life wasted. Opportunities wasted. Y'all going to go to sleep mad again. Wasted. I'm going to go to sleep angry again. Wasted. You need another one. Oh, man, I'm going to try to give you. You need another one. You're not satiated. You need another one. Another pill. Another joint. Another smoke. You need another. You're you're never satisfied. You're 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 wasting it. You're, You're wasting it. You're wasting your life. You're wasting your purpose. You're wasting what God called you to do. You're wasting. Yeah, this story is not about sin. It's about wastefulness. You know, I can tell when somebody is wasteful. When they say, PD, will I go to hell for doing this? No, but you might waste your life. No, I'm not, I don't have a heaven and hell to put you in. What are you wasting? What are you wasting? What are you, what are you, resources, wasted. Money, wasted. You got an attitude, lost another job, wasted. When are you gonna realize that God, God, God says everything you need is in the house. Everything you need, you keep trying to get what you need outside the house. Now, now here's, here, this might be the problem. Because there's provision in the house and there's grace in the house and there's resource in the house. And if you feel like you can achieve what you can, oh Jesus. If you feel like you can get what you get inside the house, outside the house, you might be sadly mistaken. Some of, y- some of y'all hear me right here. I feel like I'm speaking to the 30 and under crew. Some of y'all are wasting the grace that God has given you. Now don't pitchfork that. If that's you, I don't care if you're 50 and over. But if you're wasting the grace that God gave you, you need to start considering, okay, am I wasting the grace? Am I, what am I doing with the resources that God gave me? I forsake my tithe so I can buy more McDonald's and wonder why I can't. 
PD, I can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to. I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of amens on that. That's just okay. You still got the wrong, the camera's facing the wrong way. You still got the camera facing. You got the camera pointed at me when you need to turn it around and take a selfie. Wasted. Everything you need is in the house. It's all in the house. It's in the house of God. Why do you keep trying to chase things that are outside the house? Why do you keep trying to be satiated? The children of Israel went to God. They sent a a representative. His name was Samuel. They went went to God and said, hey, we need a king. God said, then what the heck am I? What am I? What am I? You keep trying to find it outside the house. You think you need a man, you need God. You think you need a woman, you need God. You think you need another, another one. You need God. Can you hear me talking right here? I said, I lost something. I lost something, I won't sleep. I won't rest till I find what I lost. I won't, I won't sleep. I won't rest. That woman with the coins, she, she lit a lamp. This, is, this makes an assumption. Even in the dark, I'm looking for what I lost. I'm looking for what I lost. Listen, you haven't been so, so far, you haven't been in such a dark place that the Holy Spirit won't get to where you are. You have not been, you have not done so much wrong. Hear me right here because I know the testimonies of a bunch of people in here. You have no idea who you're sitting next to. You haven't done so much wrong. There's some people in here, God brought them out of the muck and the mire. If they told you that they story, it'll scare you to death. God snatched them out. And if he snatched them out, he can snatch you out. He said, come home, baby. Come home. Come home, baby. If you've been lost, if you've been searching, if you've been trying to find, he said, come home. Everything you need is in the house. If you find your way back home, I'll fix it. I promise I'll fix it. I'll repair it. I'll clean it up. I I, I promise I'll I'll turn it around. I'll, I'll fix your broken heart. Come home. I'll mend it. I'll put it back together. Come on. I'll do it. I'll change it. I'll put you where you're supposed to be. I'll restore unto you the years that you wasted with riotous living. Come home. Come home. There's a place for you. Come home. There's a place for you. Stop searching. Stop seeking outside the house to be satiated by something that, that's gonna be temporary because of famine's c- coming. I hope you hear me today. I hope you hear me today. Come home. This story is not about sin. It's about what he lost. He said, I want back what I, what I lost. So, one, one story and I'm done. My wife, uh, Oftentimes, <clears throat> she'll call me on the phone and she'll say, baby, I, I, I don't know where I'm at. I'm, I'm lost. Baby, I, I, I sort of don't know where I'm, I'm turned around. I'm, I'm lost. And I said, baby, do you know how you got where you are? Do you know how you got here? What, do you know how you got where you are? She said, yeah, well, I came off this thing and then I turned on that thing. And then I said, if you know how you got where you are, you're never lost. Go back the way you came. If you know how you got where you are. Some of y'all, hear me right here. Some of y'all, you, you grew up in church. You grew up with your grandma, your, your, your mima, your mamagi, whatever it was for you. Big Mama, my dear, you grew up. She taught you. She taught you, right? You laughing, but you, rem- you know who I'm talking about. Auntie, whoever it was, she picked you up. She took you to church. She taught you right from wrong. She, see, see she, she, what she did was show you where home was. And really, if you, if you really give her credit, 
She's the reason why you're in here right now. The Bible said to train up a child in a way that he should go. And when he gets old, oh, we misinterpret that scripture too because we think it means he'll always do the right thing. No, no, no. It says when he get old, he know how to get back. See, we built this church for people on a comeback. Listen, as a church leader, I'm going to give y'all some game. As a church leader, you will always build the church in the way you see yourself. If you see yourself as righteous, you'll build a righteous church. If you see yourself, hear me right here. If you see yourself as self-righteous, you'll build a righteous church. Everybody will look good and clean in there and everybody will have on their suits and dress and nice cars and they'll be all messed up on the inside. But that's how you see yourself. So you're like, well, if we dress it all up and then the sheep will only look like the lead sheep. The sheep will only look like the shepherd. But it, we, we, we built this church <laughs> on some messed up people because I was the chief. I always found my way home. I always found my way. I did, I could tell you, boy, we could talk. You think you did some stuff? I did some stuff. I found my way home. And when I was still a long way off, well, I'm giving my message away for next week. When I was still a long way off, I thought I was chasing him. But he came running after me. Some of us in church, but still a long way off. See, see, you can be in the house, but still be out the house. Hear me right here. Come home. Listen, we're going to say a prayer. I'm going to say it. For the people who don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm going to say this prayer, and it's going to seem simple. But I believe that if your heart is right and if you're contrite, that this prayer can literally change your final destination for the rest of your eternity. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says he'll come into your heart, he'll change your heart, he'll deliver you. This is it. All, it, all it is is to accept and believe and confess to others. That's it. Accept and believe and confess to others. So we're going to say this prayer. But after we say this prayer, I'm going to open up this altar. I'm going to open up this altar for some people who who got far away. You don't know what happened. You got far away. You don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And listen, hear me right here. I'm not mad. I'm definitely, God's not mad. Nobody here is holding anything against you. Come home. I, I feel like I need to say this to the camera. Come home. Come home. Nobody is judging you. Come home. God is expecting you to return. He said, I I have something prepared for you. You got to come home to get it. The ring, the robe, the rebox, and the fatty calf. Come home. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. Listen, if you said that prayer, if you said that prayer today, if you said that prayer today and you believed it in your heart, I believe that you are saved. The Bible says go and sin no more. This assumes something that you have the power over sin. You have the power to change. You have the power. Jesus wouldn't tell you to go and sin no more if he knew you was going to keep sinning. He said, go and sin no more because you got the power within you. It's, a, it's about a decision. I made up in my mind. I will bless the Lord. 
But if that's you today, if you said, Pastor Dante, I, 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 I've been saved. I am saved. I know I'm saved, but I've been far from God. Or I got far, and I don't even know how I got far. I, I came to church, but I still got far away. I, I did everything you said. I went to Jesus. I still got far away. I don't know what happened. I got far away. I'm telling you right now that there is room for you at this altar. There's room for you at the cross. If that's you, and even if you don't need anybody to pray for you, take a faith step. Come up to this altar as quickly as you can so we can pray with you, so we can acknowledge that you're coming back home today. If that's you today, come on.